And you are very welcome back to the Under Centre podcast. Dower and Fionn still here with you. We are now uh, going to focus on the Aer Lingus College Football Classic and the start of the college football season. Of course, Northwestern Wildcats taking on the Nebraska Huskers on the 27th of August at half five local time. Uh, make sure if you are interested in going to the game at the Aviva Stadium, get on to Ticketmaster.ie and get your tickets in there because I am sure as as uh, soon as we get closer to the actual game, it will sell out. Joining us on the show now to look ahead to the game, we are delighted to be joined by the Director of Football Operations at Northwestern Wildcats, Jacob Schmidt. Jacob, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, guys. Thanks so much for having me. No problem at all. We are delighted that you could take the time to speak to us and look ahead, of course, to this big game. Like you mentioned a little uh, off air, it's it's been a while since um, us Irish fans over here have had the chance to see uh, college football in the flesh. Um, I think it was 20, 2019, I think it was the last year we were able to see college football and we're, and we're definitely looking forward to, uh, to seeing it again. Love it. Yeah, I know the pandemic threw a little wrench in uh, in the plans for the 2020 game, but we're excited to bring the team over here in about 60 days and hopefully beat the Cornhuskers in front of you guys. Definitely, for sure. And and how is uh, preparations going for um, coming over to, to Ireland? And again, off air, we mentioned briefly that there, there is a lot of um, logistics that uh, go into, of course, moving so many people over. Um, for this one game and, and for yourself personally so so what sort of extra duties have you had to take on now getting ready for a game in, in a different country yeah no it's a great question obviously when you're when you're talking about moving roughly 300 people over the ocean to play a football game there's a lot of a lot of details to figure out so the, the last six to nine months we've been really in the weeds of planning this game um, we've made a couple site visits, actually. We've been to Dublin and, and Aviva Stadium now two times since December um, to meet with folks on the ground and really get the, the lay of the land in terms of the stadium, the game and event operations, um, but then our hotel, right, the property that we'll be staying at, the logistics, the, the itinerary, all the team events that we're going to be a part of. So it's a, it's a big undertaking. But, you know, again, the the – working with Aer Lingus, working with uh, the logistics folks to help us move the equipment, the gear, the luggage, everything that we need for not only the game, but but a couple practice sessions while we get there. Um, it, it takes a lot of manpower and a lot of time. So that that's taken up the majority of my last six months. But again, it's going to be well worth it. We're really looking forward to, to getting over there. A Big Ten opener overseas is going to be quite the experience for our players. Jacob, you mentioned around 300 total staff coming over to Ireland. How many of those will be players? I know for, for some of our listeners who probably follow the NFL and might not necessarily follow college football as closely, you guys have a lot bigger squads and dress a lot more guys than in the NFL. Roughly, how many players, what size of a squad is going to be flying over to Ireland here to play? Yeah, so we will be bringing 108 players. Um, that's, that's us. Uh, Nebraska has a little bit of a bigger roster. So they might be bringing a few more, but we've got 108. And you're right, the, the NFL limits their roster to, to 53 guys. So we're about double that size, and that's just the players, right? So we haven't even mentioned, um, you know, coaches, interns, uh, strength staff, player development, nutrition, athletic trainers, right? So that's where those additional numbers come in, too. And we're, we're bringing about 300 folks that are imperative to the practice and the game. Uh, and when it comes to that many people trying to trying to get all of that arranged, has there has there been any sort of you know difficulties you've encountered so far? You know, I don't know, passports out of date, or maybe <laughs> passports not even gotten yet. Uh, you know, yeah. is there any anything that you've uh, had to deal with so far? I think I think that is the answer. It's it's passports, right? Obviously, we've known about this this game for a little over a year, and immediately we started to work on passports but then you know you add staff members you add new new players new student athletes right freshmen in college show up and our group just got here last week for summer school and workouts before practice starts uh, later in july and so we've we've been talking with these folks for the last six months about passports and helping them go through that process but undoubtedly some some guys don't have them yet they're in the works uh, actually one of our guys scared me last week he was moving 
apartments and he said he lost it uh remarkably it showed back <laughs> up but i mean th- those are the things that people don't think about um but are obviously imperative to us just getting on that plane and coming over so we don't want to leave anybody behind so that that's probably my main stressor at this point is just making sure that the documentation the 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 equipment manifest right the carnet everything from moving internationally is all set because uh, the rest of it will take care of itself. It really will. Yeah, I'm sure when it comes to about two weeks or a week before you do intend to fly out, there's going to be a few more. I've lost my passport. I don't know where it is. <laughs> Messages coming your Gosh, way for I sure. Hope not. I hope not. <laughs> You're probably right. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, you mentioned there that you found out about a year ago that that you were um, going to be heading over to Dublin. Um did the team or, or yourself have any say in, in the selection process of who would be going over? Did you know beforehand there was, was it, um, was it something that uh, the uh, league decided to um, just pick at random? Um, it's a great question. My, like, that was a contract negotiation between, you know, Aer Lingus college football classic, Irish American events, um, right, the the trying to get these football games back on the schedule, and they had approached us Northwestern a couple times in the past. And you alluded to a game in nineteen. I know there was one in 2012, 2016 as well. And so they wanted to get these back on the calendar and, and bring college American college football overseas. And so they've come to us a couple times. It just hasn't worked out. Right, scheduling in college football is is pretty crazy. Like we, we, our schedule is set from a non-conference game standpoint, you know, four, five, six years in advance. And so it's hard to move things around sometimes and find these opportunities to play what we call a week zero football game, especially against a conference opponent. So um, we, the football staff in particular, didn't have much say, no, but we, we know that they were trying to, to get us to come over there and play for a couple of years. And so finally it just worked out and, Again, we're, we're really excited to, to get the crew over there and experience the culture and let our guys hang out in Dublin a bit. We're actually staying uh, until Monday after the game because we have a bye week, which means we don't have a game that following Saturday. So we're able to hopefully win and then enjoy you know Dublin and let our guys go have a pint or two Sunday after the game before we fly back on Monday. So really looking forward to it. That's that's two things, Jacob, I wanted to kind of ask you. The first one is, obviously, you guys, the university is based in Illinois. That wouldn't be necessarily unfamiliar territory for some Irish heritage. And obviously, being a university, you guys have got kind of 18-year-olds, high school students, as you mentioned, uh, freshmen joining the team in America, drinking ages 21. Over here, you can get a nice cold pint of Guinness when you're 18. Uh, is that something that's going to be maybe... Eyes half closed in terms of the coaches staff, <laughs> letting the, letting the let reins go a little bit, or will you be on top of the guys? Uh, a little bit of both. A little a bit, bit of both. Bit of You're both. spot on, right? We're, 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 we're going to have uh, our rules and our policies will be in place, especially leading into that game, right? I mean, we, what we will tell the guys, and, and we won't need to tell them this, frankly. Our leadership within the locker room will take care of it. But you think about if we were in Chicago leading up to this home opener, would, would our guys be having a pint on a Thursday night before the game? The answer is no, right? So mm-hmm. we're going to let that stuff take care of itself, and our players are going to police that. And we, we, have, we have, you know, very high expectations for this team and this year, and so getting a win in the opener is critical to our success long term. Now, after we win, it's going to be very much uh, eyes wide shut, right? We, we, we mm-hmm. know that these are college guys. Um, they're over in an international land where, look, 18 is the law, so they're going to follow the law. And if that means they're going to go have a pint or two in a pub, uh, more power to them. And is there, is there much of an Irish connection in the squad, any kind of heritage going on? Or, or will most of the guys be showing up for the first time? Nah, well, it, 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 frankly, it is the first international trip for the majority of our roster, yes. Mm-hmm. Um, not many of our guys have left the country, much less, you know, gone over the Atlantic to, to Ireland or to Europe, um, mostly Canada and, and Mexico, a little bit easier trips for our guys. But um, we do have a lot of Irish connections. Um, there's a chance our starting quarterback, his last name is Sullivan, um, has mm. some Irish roots for sure. Um, obviously our head football coach, right? It's, I think it's well documented at this point, but Pat yep. Fitzgerald, um, Irish Catholic, uh, he made a trip over there uh, in February with his wife and got to go to uh, meet his cousins for the first time. And 
um, just here, here, I think he went to Epic right there in Dublin and got to hear about the story of his lineage and his family and ancestry. So there, we have a lot of Irish ties on the football team, which will, which will be really cool for those guys and those families. Um, and, and I know some, some other players in particular too are planning, you know, perhaps a day trip to Galway or the, the cliffs on, on, uh, on Sunday after the win. So, um, they're they're very excited not only to win the football game but then to experience Ireland for for a little bit as well. Yeah, hopefully they're not too um, too sore after the game because that bus journey <laughs> too it can be long it can be it'll be a little rough for for sure. For, they might be biting off more than they can chew. Yeah, I'm with well, you. This, I'm with this you. is the funny thing, though. The difference is we we obviously talked to, to plenty of American guests and kind of the idea of travel for us. If we go to Galway, that's that's a long trip. That's like 250 kilometers. I don't know what that is in miles, but sure. you Americans, you don't blink at that at all. You're like, oh, that's yeah. no problem. Three, four hours. Sure, that's only down the road. We can do that in a day. That's right. Again. Yeah. That's right. That's nothing. That's an easy day trip. No worries. <laughs> Yeah, I do. I should. I I actually should point out there, Jacob, because you did, Jacob. You mentioned that um, you you, you obviously the team is going to stick to to the regulations ahead of the game, um, mm-hmm. and you won't see the guys having a, going out for a drink on the Thursday night before game. I feel a little guilty now that I kind of told you off air. I was out with a wedding the night before we played air game. <laughs> you make me feel that a little bit guilty. But, uh... No, 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 no. It's, uh, don't feel guilty. I'm I'm jealous of you. You're, you're so, good. You're good. So so are we definitely ruling out me as a late alternate then on, on okay. the day if you need it? <laughs> I was going to say we we have a couple roster spots open. I might need one of you guys. So if just, you need a just... D tackle, you. You know who to call. Them. I love it. I love it. No, no, no pints Thursday or Friday, so I can give no, you a no, call no, on no. Saturday. You never know. No, don't worry, don't worry. You can pay for my bus trip to the cliffs from Oher on the Sunday with the team. And it's fine. That's that's. Pe- I love it. I love it. <laughs> but um, in terms of of preparations for the, for the season as as a whole, obviously last year didn't sort of go the way that that you would have liked. Um, what? Well, how are you? How is the team? And how how is Coach uh, Fitzgerald feeling ahead? Uh, uh, looking into the 2022 season. Yeah, we're, we're really motivated. We're really motivated because you said it last year was not up to our standard. You know, the year prior, we had a, an incredible year where we, we won our division and went to the Big Ten championship game. So to, to, to play the way we did last year in 2021 was, was no way in shape or form up to our expectations or our standards. So we've got a motivated group. Um, they've been working since January 1st on getting that, that, that bad taste out of their mouth and, you know, that, that's eight months of preparation now will lead into this football game. And so they're going to be hungry to hit somebody not wearing purple. They're going to be hungry to, you know, start this season off on the right foot. So uh, our leadership is in a great place. Um, some of our best players are our seniors and juniors, right, our upperclassmen who've been around for a while and have had success and have now also felt the, the you know, what a bad year looks like too. So they're they're hungry they're motivated they've been working really hard um you know but but you gotta you gotta show up you gotta put it all together show up there at aviva stadium on the 27th and put it all together and because nebraska's saying the same thing right they didn't have the year they wanted last year so everybody's working everybody's going to be ready um we've just got to execute and find a way to to beat them by one point that's all that matters we're uh we were aware a couple of years ago, you guys obviously upgraded the football practice facilities there in Northwestern. Yeah. Absolutely spectacular. I've seen the images there. Is that is that on the university campus? Is that a little bit off? It's on the beach front for anyone who might not have seen. I, I would encourage them to go and Google images, some of the, the facilities you guys have there. It looks absolutely beautiful and spectacular. Yeah, no, please, please do Google it for sure. It is it is worth the time. It's it is beautiful. Uh, and yes, it is on campus. That That is our campus is right on the shores of Lake Michigan, one of our great lakes over here in the U.S. And it is just uh, it's it's one of the more picturesque, beautiful campuses in our country. Um, now, you won't see many pictures from the, the months of November through March, though. <laughs> right. So so definitely Google July when you yeah. when you Google the facilities. But it, it's it's incredible. We have a private beach right on campus. Our guys take advantage of all the time. Um, and it is it's a huge investment by our university. We moved in in 2018, so about four or five years now where we've been in these practice facilities. Uh, and it matters. It matters to our guys, their day to day, their two minute walk to class. They're right across the street from where they live. Um, and the facilities are state of the art. They've got the best locker room, uh, weight room, recovery, nutrition, you name it, the best in the country. So 
it really gives us a chance to recruit elite level student athletes, um, but then to develop them and make sure that they're, they're, they're able to perform their best on Saturday while getting a top 10 degree in the country. So it's, it's, a, it's a pretty great recipe for success. And does the strength and conditioning coach also enjoy the big long beach to send the lads down <laughs> sprinting up and back through the heavy sand? He uh, he does for multiple reasons. That is one of them. The, uh, the sand workouts, but then um, something about strength coaches and tanning. They they love mm. to uh, get some sun themselves. So it's a, it's a pretty good place to be these these months these months of June and July. Um, Jacob. When it comes to sort of your role specifically, you know, we hear sort of like the director of football operations and sort of uh-huh. GM roles when it comes to the NFL. And obviously mm-hmm. they have to keep their eye on what's going on in the college game and, and you know, uh, looking ahead to draft season and, and who are they going to be the standout players. And when it comes to yourself and, and for for college and, and trying to fill like such big rosters that you have, and especially of, we mentioned there almost 108, yep. you know, how – how how much are you keeping how much do you have to keep your eye on on almost almost every high school and probably a lot of community colleges as well around the country just to try and um see the best prospects to uh, to bring to school yeah no it's a great question uh I'm, I'm fortunate in my role where i don't have to do that day to day because we have a staff large enough right we have enough resources where i have a director of player personnel uh, similar to, uh, uh, I suppose, a GM in an NFL team who's responsible for running a recruiting office uh, where we have four full-time uh, individuals and then we have a team of six interns. So we have roughly 10 to 12 people every single day whose job it is to watch film, to uh, have conversations with high school coaches, to request transcripts to see how these student-athletes are academically, are they the right fit for us, Uh, But then also to project forward, to look at our future roster and to plan how many spots are we going to have open, right? We get 85 scholarships. That's it. And so we have to know any given year, how many kids are we looking to bring in to fill those openings? So it's, it's a big deal. It's frankly, it's the lifeblood of our profession, right? It's, it's making sure that we have a complete roster, a competitive roster that we're recruiting to our fit, but we're recruiting the best student athletes possible, uh, and it's a full-time job for those, you know, like I said, those those 10 to 12 individuals. And I'm I'm heavily involved, as are our coaches. So it's a big, big deal when it comes to any college football program, uh, the recruiting. It's huge. And you mentioned there uh, the, the players that you're looking at. It, for you guys in Northwestern, obviously, you already mentioned, you also get a, a top-notch degree in terms of the, the standing in the nation. Uh, and so obviously with any university, especially you guys, you're looking for not just athletes, but student athletes. And when you're going to recruit these players, are you looking to try and find the, the best personalities, the best athletes, student athletes that you can? Or are you looking at the system that's already in place in the school and looking for athletes and student athletes that can contribute to what's already there? Yeah, it's a bit of both. It's a bit of both, right? We've, we've got to look at the entire package because of, like you said, the, the, the incredible academics that Northwestern offers. And so we, we do. We have real restrictions when it comes to um, academic minimums, right? The criteria it takes to come to Northwestern to play football. Um, we, we, have, we have rules and, and, and guidelines we have to follow. So we're out there looking for the best student athlete that fits that requirement, but that also is an incredible football player, right? That wants to come here, that wants to play in the NFL, that wants to help us win a Big Ten championship. Um, and so we, we, some people think that it's harder for us to do that, but what we would argue is that it actually shrinks the pool, right? It actually makes our focus that much stronger because uh, we, we, can, we can sort of uh, toss out, you know, a certain percentage of the high schoolers out there because, unfortunately, they don't, just don't have the grades or the test score to allow us to recruit them. So we're looking for the right fit. We're looking for that kid who wants a great degree, who wants to play in the NFL, um, and who wants to play at this level, the Big Ten, right? One of the best conferences in our country. Um, but it's it's much more than just, you know, black and white of football or school. It's it's both. Excellent. And, and um, we, we've seen a lot of um, – over here, we obviously see a lot of documentaries when it comes to sort of, you know, players that get drafted. And, and the last couple of years now, Northwestern have been very lucky to get not just one, but but two first-round draft picks, especially yeah. in, in 2021 with, with Sean Slater 
and Greg Newsom. Um, for the cause, like, so how how rewarding is that to see when you not when you see sort of not just even one player going in the first round of a draft, but two of the players that you've nurtured and and helped become a better player over the last three four years finally making to the league. Yeah, it's it's amazing, right? It's 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 one of the reasons why we do this. We want to help these eighteen year olds develop as a as a as a player, yes, but also as a person. And so, to see these two guys in particular, Greg and Rashawn, last year get drafted in the first round. I mean, just just two unbelievable kids. They 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 tirelessly worked their entire time here. Uh, I mean, frankly, the best players on our football team, but they worked like they were the worst, right? Like they they were always in the film room. They were always making their teammates better. They were always asking the coaches questions because they knew they wanted to, to play for football for a long time and do so at a really high level. Um, so it's it's it was it was really great. And, and frankly, we're, we're hoping to have another first round of this upcoming year. Um, our starting uh, left tackle, Peter Skaronsky, is is highly rated um, in his class. So knock on some wood, but he's going to have a heck of a year and, um, and and get drafted really high next year as well. So it's uh, it's it's awesome, right? And it gives us a chance to to recruit those elite players we just talked about who want to go to the NFL. They like to see a program that develops NFL level, NFL caliber players. So when you get some first rounders and, and yeah, you pop two in the same year, that's a really big deal to these high school kids. They want to see that, uh, that, that, uh, that trajectory of your program and the ability to, to develop these guys into first round picks. So it's a really big deal. That's amazing. Well, Jacob, before we let you go, it's been fantastic to talk to you. I have one last question. Uh, I hope you've obviously made it clear to any of the lads, as you mentioned, who might not have traveled over to Europe, that uh, they are coming to Ireland. So on all that lovely Northwestern gear you give them over the course of the year, make sure they pack their uh, long sleeve jumpers and stuff. <laughs> I know I know, Northwestern and Nebraska as well are well used to plenty of cold weather, but just make sure they're not coming to the south of France here. There's a good chance they get rain every single day they're over here, even if it is kind of... At the end of August. That's right. No, we 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 uh, we will make sure that the rain gear is packed. Yes, um, absolutely. That plenty of footballs come with us in case the the weather is uh, less than optimal on game day. But no, they're 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 beyond excited. I mean, Chicago is not not too far from uh, Dublin weather, right? We get a mm-hmm. lot of mm-hmm. uh, a lot of rain, a lot of snow, a lot of wind. Um, so we're used to it, but you're right. Late August, we'd prefer 80 and sunny, but we know that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely not. Um, yeah. Then just one more on my side well, yeah. before I go to sort of double, double uh, barrel question here. Um, you mentioned about training as well, but you get here. Um, are you looking to do a full week of sessions? Um, probably you've, like arrived the Monday for the game on the Saturday. And then secondly, for yourself personally, when you're over here, like you said, you mentioned um, you're not flying home till the following Monday. Is there anywhere in particular that you're looking forward to seeing? So to, your, to answer your first question, we will we will land in Dublin on Wednesday morning, the week of the game. And so we will practice Wednesday and Thursday. And then Friday, we do what, kind of a typical home game Friday for us or some meetings and some walkthroughs and nothing too, nothing too intensive on their bodies. Um, so we will. We'll practice a few times at Aviva Stadium. Um, you know, we'll spend some time at our hotel right there, city center. Um, you know, we'll, we'll walk around, we'll see, we'll see Temple Bar and we'll walk Grafton street, maybe a little bit. We just won't partake until after the win. Uh, but, uh, no, we're, we're looking forward to it. Um, and then in terms of, yeah, kind of that, I, 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 I wish I could tell you that I'm going to have time to go play around a round of golf or, 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 uh, you know, see some live music in Temple Bar, but it's, it's going to be a busy trip for the staff, for the operations staff in particular. So, I'm just hoping Sunday afternoon when we get everything packed up at Aviva Stadium when we're one and out that a, a handful of us can sit somewhere with a pint and just uh, you know sort of be grateful for a heck of a trip and then make sure we get all get home safely on Monday because there's there's a lot of moving parts when we're coming back to the airport and getting wheels up there Monday afternoon. So, um, but again, really really looking forward to you know late August and uh, and and getting a big win over there in Dublin. Yeah, definitely. And Jacob, we're, we're definitely excited to have you guys over here and we're really looking forward to the game once again, August 27th in the Aviva Stadium, Northwestern Wildcats against the Nebraska Huskers. Get your tickets now at Ticketmaster. 
www.bet.ie to make sure you don't miss out on the game. A lovely half five kickoff here local time which is great and then uh, it's i believe half 11 central time it will be kick off back over there in the states uh, jacob smith uh, director of football operations at northwestern wildcats we really appreciate the time and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you in august you bet guys thanks so much for having me go cats no problem. And that's where we're going to end this edition of the show. Before we do, once again, make sure you follow us on Twitter at UndercenterPod and the same on Instagram. And uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Undercenter Podcast, to get all of our interviews and catch up with previous ones, including uh, Washington Commanders head coach Ron Rivera a couple of weeks ago. But uh, until next time, Fionn, as always, thank you. Thank you. And stay safe, and we'll see you soon.